Welcome in to Outkick the Show. I'm your fearless leader, Clay Travis. I hope all of you are having fantastic, what is it, Tuesday? It feels like it could be Friday. Feels like every day, brand new, breaking, crazy news stories, all of them running together. I believe it is Tuesday. Um, I want to tell you right off the top, we got a lot to get into. Secret Service Director resigns. Uh, Biden finally seen for the first time in forever. Uh, what do the gambling odds look like now that it appears Kamala Harris is going to be the nominee and there are going to be no challengers? Uh, Keith Olbermann loses his mind. Mark Cuban loses his mind. Is there any hope for them? Should the fact that Kamala was the mistress, a.k.a. side chick of a married 60-year-old man, uh, be relevant in the 2024 election, all that and more. Uh, but I want to say right off the top, Prize Picks, America's number one daily fantasy sports app. With Prize Picks, you against the number. You can win up to 100 times your money on Prize Picks. With as little as four correct picks, you can turn 10 bucks into $1,000. Get in on the excitement while you can right now. Again, up to 100 times your money. You can turn $10 into $1,000 while watching Team USA rack up all the gold medals over in Paris this summer. Uh, starting on Friday, you can make a prize picks lineup of players, basketball, soccer, tennis, golf, all of that. It is little as 60 seconds. Pick more or less two to six players, and you are ready to roll. Download the Prize Picks app today. Use the code OUTKICK for a first deposit match up to 100 bucks. Code OUTKICK on Prize Picks, first deposit match up to 100 bucks. You can play in California, you can play in Texas, you can play in Georgia. If you're feeling left out, get signed up now. PrizePicks.com, code OUTKICK. Pick four, pick less. It's that easy. All right. The Secret Service Director has resigned. She should have been gone within 24 hours of the shooting of this 20-year-old from the elevated rooftop that the Secret Service inexplicably left wide open. I give credit across the political spectrum, whether it's AOC, whether it's Ro Khanna, whether it is Jim Jordan, Nancy Mace, Democrats and Republicans all came together and said that Kim Cheadle's performance was unacceptable and earlier this morning she finally resigned. It took far too long. You have one job when you are the head of the Secret Service. This was the biggest Secret Service failure for certain since 1981 because we've never had a president or former president shot going all the way back to Reagan in 81. I actually believe this is a bigger failure even than the JFK assassination. People are going to clip that headline and they're not going to listen to the logic here, but I want all of you to follow me on this logic. We did not have people pointing to the school book depository in Dallas saying Lee Harvey Oswald is there with a gun 10 minutes before JFK came driving through Dealey Plaza in that uncovered convertible. There was nobody out there running around saying, hey, there's a clear and present threat here. Nobody saw Oswald with a gun, to my knowledge, on that day. Now, some of you are going to say, well, it wasn't Oswald by himself. He wasn't the sole shooter. Okay. There was not on film people running around before JFK drove through that I have seen telling all the police, hey, there's a guy with a gun over there. You need to do something. Now, the result of the Trump shooting, thankfully, was Trump is still alive, although that brave firefighter is dead and two other people were hit. So their lives are forever changed. Trump lived, but he only lived because he turned his head at the last second. Otherwise, he would have been killed on live television by this assassin. Yes, JFK was killed, but there was, to my knowledge, not police and secret service being notified in the moments before about exactly what was going on with Lee Harvey Oswald. So I think all of that is a big deal here. 
And let me just hit you with the time frame to reinforce that. I'm a big believer in my life. I am a big believer in sometimes you get really fortunate. You get really lucky. But you shouldn't rely on blind luck over time. You should look at the choices you made and say, did I make the right choices? In a sports context, Nick Saban talks about all this this all the time. That's what the process is. If you make good decisions, if your processes are correct, then ultimately you get the best results. You can make awful decisions and still get good results. Let me give you a football example. Quarterback cannot see a defensive lineman dropping into coverage. That defensive lineman can get hit right in the hands. The ball can bounce off and it can end up getting caught and it can be a touchdown for the offense going in the opposite direction from the guy who should have caught it. That doesn't mean the quarterback made a good decision. It means he got really lucky. Over time, if the quarterback drops back, doesn't see the lineman dropping back into zone coverage and keeps making that throw, the results are going to be bad. You sometimes get lucky making a bad choice, but you shouldn't feel like you made the right choice because the outcome ended up beneficial to you because of good fortune. To me, I look at this situation and I say, based on all the failures, Trump should be dead. The Secret Service failed in its most important job, which is keeping the person alive that they're trying to protect. And unlike with JFK, they actually had ample evidence that the shooter was there and was a real threat to President Trump. Think about this. This is the timeline. At 5.10 p.m., the shooter was first identified as a person of interest inside of Butler, PA, at that venue. At 5.30, he was spotted with a rangefinder, trying to figure out exactly how far it was that he would need to aim to shoot to kill the president. At 5.52, he was spotted on the roof by Secret Service. At 6.02, Trump took the stage. Ten minutes after they saw him on the roof, he didn't fire his first shots, this would-be assassin, until 6.12 from the rooftop, 20 minutes after we first knew he was on that rooftop armed, potentially trying to kill the former and perhaps future president of the United States. I'm sorry. This is a bigger failure of protection than what happened to JFK. Again, the JFK result was far worse, but we didn't have 20 minutes of eyeballs on uh, Lee Harvey Oswald or whoever the assassin or assassins were in that particular time. The result was better. We got fortunate. Trump was not killed, but he should have been killed based on all the failures, and if he had been killed, it would have been a worse Secret Service failure for sure than what happened in 1963 in Dallas, Texas. Again, consider the full context, the process of failure. We got incredibly lucky here. We didn't get lucky in Dallas. We got incredibly lucky as it pertains to Trump still being alive. Based on all these Secret Service failures, they strung more failures together in Butler, Pennsylvania than they did in Dallas, Texas in 1963. And the idea that Kim Cheadle, the Secret Service agent, was not immediately fired within 24 hours of all of this information is inexcusable. Again, I give credit to Democrats and Republicans for coming together on a bipartisan basis and saying this woman needs to be fired. Biden wouldn't do it. In fact, Biden praised her in his comments after she resigned. Whether it was Joe Biden or Donald Trump or RFK Jr. or anybody across the political spectrum, allowing a quarter inch to come between 
our president or former president or potential candidate for president being alive or not is a failure of epic magnitudes for sure the biggest failure since 1981 but you can argue it's as big or bigger of a failure from the secret service process than what happened in Dallas now the result was worse in Dallas because the shooter or shooters did not miss. But the actual failures of the Secret Service were more significant, I think, based on all the data than what happened in 63. To my knowledge, nobody was pointing out that Lee Harvey Oswald or anybody else had a gun for 20 minutes before JFK drove through in his convertible in Dealey Plaza. And again, I guarantee you this is going to get clipped Everybody's going to react to the headline. They're not actually going to listen to the analysis. If you're being honest, the analysis is correct. The Secret Service failed worse to protect Trump in terms of their responsibility and obligation. Once those shots, once once the trigger is pulled, they're just relying on pure luck as to whether or not Trump lives. They can't control. They they got lucky. The guy missed. Trump turned his head at the last second. Maybe the guy's not a great shooter. They got incredibly fortunate that these uh, shots did not find their mark in terms of the target of Trump. Kim Cheadle should have been gone immediately. Joe Biden, yesterday I said we hadn't seen him since Wednesday. We finally have seen Biden in the last hour or so. He arrived at Delaware and he got on the airplane. And I was talking about this last night with my wife because so many people are sitting around saying, hey, is Biden still alive? And I said, yeah, of course he's still alive. Because it would actually have made Kamala Harris's ascension easier if Joe Biden were actually to have passed because then they don't have to force him out. Uh, I'm scared that I'm glad, I hope he survives. I'm anti-death. I'm scared that he's going to be president for the next six months. Do you feel confident that if China invades Taiwan, that Joe Biden's going to be able to respond appropriately? I don't. Do you feel confident that our adversaries are not going to take advantage of an enfeebled president who clearly is dealing with severe I believe, mental and physical cognition issues. Do you feel like Joe Biden can make rational, reasoned, intelligent decisions right now? I don't. And so if you were China, and if you were trying to decide, hey, when's the right time to invade Taiwan, I'm not sure the United States has ever been more vulnerable in terms of its leadership than right now. Because in theory... Biden's going to be in charge for August, September, October, November, December, into January. Five or six nearly more months of him being in charge, and he can't do the job right now. So this, to me, is a very scary time, and I hope that we are able to create enough deterrence that we don't end up with another Russia invasion of Ukraine situation or another uh, Israel attack situation. By the way, speaking of Israel, um, I said this today on the show, just letting people know, I am doing this show, not OutKick, because it's going to be so late, but I am doing the Clay and Buck show from Israel for the first week of August. I'm going to be touring all the terror sites, unfortunately. I'm going to be meeting a lot of the survivors of the October 7th terror attack. I've never been to Israel I'm going to be seeing it for myself. I will be live with all of you for three hours every day on Clay and Buck in the first week of August. I'm doing OutKick for the rest of this week, and then I'm on the road for like three weeks. I'm all over the country. I'm going to Israel. I've got a lot of events to get to, and then I will be back sometime with this show in the middle part of August. I'll just be on the road so much it will be almost impossible. Now, the way the news cycle is going, 
I may record quick two or three minute videos reacting to whatever is taking place in the event that chaos unspools, which may well happen. Uh, I certainly will be for most of those times. All next week, I'll be doing the radio show. All the week after, I'll be doing the radio show. Taking a couple of days off because I'll be uh, at my 20th anniversary. Been married uh, 20 years come August. So I'm going to be with my wife for a few days in mid-August with my 20th anniversary. Um, so I won't be doing the radio show for a few days there. Otherwise, radio show, if you're curious what I think, boom, 500 stations nationwide, number one in like 20 different markets. Just turn on the radio, download the podcast. You'll be able to hear uh, everything that I think. Um, I wanted to hit you with this. Uh, gambling odds. What is the actual impact of the switch uh, to Kamala Harris purely from a gambling perspective. And purely from a gambling perspective, there has not been a major shift now that we know Kamala Harris is going to be the nominee. I told you there were two major questions that came out of Joe Biden's Sunday announcement that he was no longer going to be running for re-election in 2024. Point one was, hey, is Kamala Harris going to be challenged? The answer appears to be, no, she is not. She is going to be the Democrat nominee in 2024. Point two, which still remains to be determined, is, is Joe Biden going to be able to fulfill his entire term? Does he have six more months of being able in any way to be president of the United States? That remains to be seen. But the gambling odds basically have suggested that this is the equivalent of a starting quarterback who is not very good being replaced by a backup quarterback that there's not much difference between. There's been a little bit of improvement in the numbers for Kamala Harris compared to Joe Biden uh, in the gambling markets. But right now, as I speak to you, Trump is about a 30-point favorite. Um, and other than in the immediate aftermath of the assassination attempt, when his odds went up even more, Trump has been around a 30-point favorite for much of the last couple of months. Uh, so we will see whether Kamala Harris begins to cut into that lead or not. Um, and I'm sure there will be some early immediate frenzy of, oh, look at this poll, Kamala Harris on fire, like all those things. Uh, but I suspect that that will fade uh, over the next 10 days, and we're going to end up back with Trump having uh, a small lead in this race. We'll see. Now, I do think this is an intriguing question. Kamala Harris began her political career as the side chick, a.k.a. the mistress of Willie Brown, who was the mayor of San Francisco. She was in her 20s, and she was sleeping with a 60-year-old who was married and had kids. Now, I think that's a big deal. Because if you're going to argue to me that Donald Trump sleeping allegedly with Stormy Daniels, I think, team, look this up. I believe the allegation was that that happened in 2006. If you're going to argue for eight years and then you're going to layer on 34 felony counts associated with this, that this is a massively important aspect of Donald Trump's character and that it should be uh, talked about incessantly for eight years, which it has been, even though Trump has denied a sexual relationship. How can you tell me that Stormy Daniels and Trump from 2006, nine years, nearly a full decade before Trump ran for president, is a hugely important story, but Kamala Harris sleeping with a powerful California politician who was married to start her political career, that that's not a story worthy of discussion. You can't. I would defy anybody at CNN, at MSNBC, at the New York Times, Washington Post, ABC, NBC, CBS, 
Anyone who has covered the Stormy Daniels, Donald Trump allegations as a legitimate news story that goes directly to the heart of Donald Trump's ability to be president of the United States, how can you not discuss Kamala Harris sleeping with a married man to start her political career and advance herself in California politics? He gave her a job, Willie Brown did. Monica Lewinsky was a huge story for Bill Clinton. Kamala Harris is a more successful Monica Lewinsky. How is that not a huge part of her story? Now, you can argue, and I would even be in this camp, I don't care who politicians sleep with. That's between them and their partners to the extent they have any. And I've said this about SEC football coaches back in the day. If you told me that my favorite team would win every game in a year, I would be fine with the SEC football coach living in a harem. You give him as many chicks as he wants. A lot of you felt that way about Bobby Petrino back in the day at Arkansas. Number one thing Arkansas Razorback fans would say is, I don't care. If Bobby Petrino can get us into a New Year's Day bowl game, he can sleep with anybody he wants to. That's the overriding perspective of Arkansas Razorbacks. I said back in the day, hey, if Bill Clinton's a better president because somebody's giving him consensual blowjobs, I want him getting blown all the time. I would rather the president screw anybody he or she wants than screw the whole country like Joe Biden has. That's my personal position, okay? So I'm not the person who runs around and grabs his heart and falls down and says, oh my God, can you believe Bill Clinton did X? Or Donald Trump did Y. I'm not that person. I never will be. But if the media is going to tell me for eight years, hey, we have to examine every single person who claimed that they slept with Donald Trump because it goes directly to the fitness and character of Trump as it pertains to his ability to be president. How in the world can Kamala Harris, who is a more successful Monica Lewinsky, banged a married guy and got a job from it and started her political career based on it? And let me just say, it's a little bit weird to be sleeping with a married man who is over 30 years older than you. Just FYI, that's weird. Most of you, out there listening to me right now, do not know a girl in her 20s who has slept with a guy in his 60s to say nothing of been the side chick. Remember, she didn't end up marrying him. This isn't a second or third wife who goes on and gets married and has kids. Kamala Harris spent most of her youth, her 20s, 30s, and 40s, sleeping with married men, never got married until she was 50, has no kids of her own. She was sleeping her way to the top of California politics, starting in her 20s. That seems kind of significant to me. If you're going to tell me that Trump allegedly sleeping with a porn star or a Playboy model directly implicates whether or not he can be president of the United States, then I don't understand, and you said the same thing about Bill Clinton and Monica Lewinsky. I don't understand how you're going to give a pass to Kamala Harris. I think what happened is this. I think Kamala Harris had the benefit of being the vice president in 2020 during BLM, and I think the American media, so many reporters, and so many executives were terrified of being called racist if they talked about her sleeping with a married man that they pretended the story didn't exist. Huge percentages of the United States population has no idea about Kamala Harris's history. Like, you got a ton of women out there, married women in particular, who don't like Donald Trump because they think he cheated on his wives and they don't think he's trustworthy and they're going to vote for the side chick. Think about how crazy, because they don't know. 
Oh, there's a lot of suburban housewives out there that are like, I could never vote for Trump. I think he's a cheater. So you're going to vote for the side chick mistress, Kamala Harris? Because we know 100% she's the side chick and the mistress that was cheating with the 60-year-old mayor. Now look, if the standard is just, we don't care who anybody sleeps with, I am 100% comfortable with that. We want the best man or the best woman for the job. We're not going to get in personal politics. That's not been the standard with Trump. That wasn't the standard with Clinton. They have gone after every single skeleton in the bedroom closet of both of those guys. And neither one of them slept with someone to advance their political career. Clinton just wanted a blowjob from anybody he could get a blowjob from. Trump's had a lot of different sex partners over the years. But none of them were to advance their political career. Kamala slept with a married politician so that she could get her first job and begin her political career in San Francisco. She slept her way to the top. That's what women claim they hate. And she never got married to any of these guys and never had kids with them. So you can't even say, well, when she was in her 20s, she made some poor choices, and then she got older, and she got wiser, and she got married, and she had kids of her own. No. She slept her way to the top of California politics, and nobody will talk about it. Meanwhile, Donald Trump gets accused of sleeping with anybody, and it's a lead story for eight years. He just got convicted of 34 felonies in New York City over trying not to talk about an alleged relationship with Stormy Daniels. He paid her $130,000 or whatever just to not have to talk about it at all. And the media said, that's unacceptable. He has to talk about it. We all have to talk about it. This is a huge story. It goes to his fitness for office. Front page for eight years. Lead story on MSNBC and CNN. Kamala Harris literally bangs her way to her first job in politics by sleeping with a married mayor of San Francisco. Nobody talks about it. This clip is probably going to go viral, and it's going to be seen by tons of people. It's 100% true, and a lot of you are going to say, how did I not know this? A lot of women out there who don't trust Trump are going to be voting for the side chick. The woman who banged the married man. The woman who never had kids of her own. The woman who never actually became even the second or the third wife of the powerful guy. She was just the woman that they slept with that used that to make her political power grow. Kamala Harris is the woman that most married women hate. She's trying to blow up the relationship. She's not even trying to be the second wife. She never was the one to have kids. Look, there's people out there. I get it. Marriages end. Second wives happen. More kids happen. Third wives happen. I'm not judging. Kamala was never even that. She was just the side chick, just the mistress of the married man, and she didn't even try to hide it and a lot of you don't even know about it. That seems significant to me. If you think that it doesn't matter, that's fine. I presume that you also have been in the camp of saying, hey, I don't care at all about what Trump might or might not have done with any other woman. I only focus on whether or not I agree with his political philosophy. If that's your perspective, more power to you. You've been honest and concrete in your perspective throughout the Trump era. You know who didn't have that perspective? MSNBC, CNN, The Washington Post, The New York Times, ABC, NBC, CBS. All of these left-wing outlets covered Donald Trump's sex life with a fine-tooth comb. They got out their, their magnifying glass, and they're going over every woman that he ever had a relationship with, even though it had nothing to do with his politics, in an effort to try to keep him from getting elected. 
Why are they not doing the same thing to Kamala Harris? I would love, you should tag them. Rachel Maddow, Joe Scarborough, Mika Brzezinski, Christopher Hayes, Anderson Cooper, Jake Tapper, Caitlin Collins. Tag them. Ask them why they all covered Donald Trump's sex life with a magnifying glass and they won't even analyze any of Kamala Harris's past even though she got her start in politics by sleeping with a married man. I think it's very valid. I think it needs to be out there in the public sphere. I think it needs to be widely debated, discussed, and analyzed, just like Trump's sex life was. Fair is fair. If it matters with Trump, it should matter even more with Kamala. Will it? We'll see whether or not any of these news outlets that claim to be fair and impartial actually will cover it. Uh, Finally, got two good buddies out there that's brains are broken. Keith Olbermann. Keith Olbermann, I can't believe this is real. Keith Olbermann demanded that the St. Louis Cardinals franchise be shut down and the stadium be imploded because he was upset that he thought that some Cardinal players were supporting Donald Trump. Now, this is the same guy who has demanded the Supreme Court be disbanded, who's demanded that Trump be executed for treason. I mean, the guy's brain is broken. But I do think it's intriguing that the minute any athlete, the minute any athlete says anything other than Trump is Hitler, Keith Olbermann wants them to be silenced. Now, in this particular situation, it doesn't appear that the Cardinals were trying to make a political statement based on what I've seen. They were trying to honor some DJ. They said, whatever. But why is it that the moment that anybody steps out of the left-wing media uh, universe, everyone who claims that they want athletes to be able to say whatever they want immediately runs in the opposite direction. Now, I'm going to be consistent here. I think in general, even if I agree with them, I think politics in uniform at work, when you are an athlete or any other person, whether you work at McDonald's, Walmart, or you deliver packages for UPS, I think it's bad for business, right? I'm in the business of giving you my opinion. If I were just in the business of I don't know. Let's say that I was in the business of just selling books. I would sell every kind of book there is. iHeart distributes clay and buck. iHeart has every kind of political podcast on the planet, just like they have every kind of music. Whether you like rap or country, I think that's super smart. In fact, I think iHeart distributes Keith Olbermann and his podcast. I think... The same people that pay me to do Clay and Buck pay Keith Olbermann to be a crazy uh, lunatic maniac uh, on his show. I think that's the right business because you want to cover all aspects of the political spectrum. What I would ask you is how many people like Olbermann stand on principle and how many of them stand entirely on politics? If you only stand on politics... The ground underneath you is always going to be wobbly and you are always going to be tumbling down. That's the reality. Olbermann's a good example of that. So is my good buddy Mark Cuban. Uh, Mark Cuban said uh, recently in a tweet that age is undefeated. I think he said something like that. Adam, you can get the exact quote so I make it perfect. I responded to Mark Cuban by saying, but Mark, A month ago, you told us Joe Biden was sharp as a tack and said, bragged about how you had been talking to him and had no doubts that he was able to be president at a high level. Um, What's happened to Mark Cuban? I think he's a great example of someone that social media broke. Because back in the day when Mark Cuban bought the Dallas Mavericks, I was a fan. He was rebellious. He was young. He was willing to disrupt the larger sports media ecosystem. He was someone that I respected. 
he's become a shell of himself. He's basically the Howard Stern of sports, a guy that initially was hugely popular, talented, disruptive, intelligent, dynamic, and then as they aged, became a shell of themselves. In both of their cases, their Trump derangement syndrome led them off a cliff into total insanity. And I just think it's instructive. I tell myself this all the time. He said, Mark Cuban did, father time is undefeated when Joe Biden stepped down one month after he told us that Joe Biden was 100%, in his opinion, based on his interaction, able to be president for four more years. They lie. I will sit here and tell you this right now. I'm 45. If I ever become a uh, hypocritical lunatic, I'm hanging up. I'm hanging up the mic. I got enough money. I'll ride off into the sunset. I will stand on principle, even if in the years ahead, it upsets people who otherwise are fans. Because I'm not claiming that you're always going to agree with me. All I'm telling you is I will be honest, I will be consistent, and I will be fearless. And if I'm not any of those things, I'm riding off into the sunset, baby, with my $100 million and just chilling on the beach for a while. Uh, all right. I love all of you. DBAP, unless you need to SBAP, we'll be back tomorrow. This, as always, has been OutKick, the show. <laughs>